Hello and welcome back to the notes and at the end of a wild and weary week we've had some positive news at the end of it which has at least helped markets close on a positive note. First of all let's take a look at uh, European economic growth data we had a lot of it today. If we see uh, Germany's GDP numbers you can see that there's still nothing exactly very exciting but the fact that German growth is still positive and accelerating from its low base is obviously very encouraging given the extent of the nerves that we have had of late. The broadly positive numbers from the rest of Europe as well, at least compared to expectation. Once we came uh, to the US Open, we had uh, consumer uh, retail sales data, uh, very important numbers if people are trying to gauge whether there's going to be a recession. There was a plenty of whisper numbers that we could see a further deceleration of what has obviously been quite a concerning slowing down trend. Instead, we saw quite a positive number. It might just might indicate that uh, people are at last beginning to spend the savings they've derived from cheaper fuel. Too soon to tell, obviously a sign of some encouragement. Far from giving ballast to the belief that we could be heading for a recession, it uh, actually caused the Atlanta Fed to increase its estimate for growth in the current quarter for US GDP. Now, in terms of what we saw from the markets, we started with a renewed savage sell-off across Asia, particularly in Japan, but then we saw a rebound from low levels in Europe. Now, that's not just about the growth numbers. We also saw uh, a very positive response to Deutsche Bank's plan to buy back some of its debt securities. If we take a look at bank shares uh, in um, both Japan and uh, Europe, you can see that they've been absolutely pummeled as of late by fears over negative interest rates, what that could do to their profitability. They're certainly not in any way out of the woods. But you can see that at least that bounce helped Europe. This is perhaps still the single most important trend to be keeping an eye on. If you have this kind of radical worry about the financial sector, it's very difficult to uh, see growth going from there. Now, elsewhere in the markets, we saw uh, a very dramatic rebound for the oil price in, uh, in percentage terms, although that was really only because it had fallen so far in the first place. You saw a relatively calm day uh, in the bond markets. You saw some recovery from what are still very poor levels, the S&P 500. But perhaps one final chart I'd like to show, which uh, does tell us something quite startling. This is the value of the yen compared to uh, the US dollar. As this line falls, so the yen strengthens. Japan being a, a big exporter could do with a weaker currency. The uh, very sharp fall you see here follows the Bank of Japan's decision to move to negative interest rates. It is startling how negatively, how counterintuitively that has been received. It really knocks the notion that central banks are in control, that central banks have further ammunition. A large part of the reason that they went for negative rates rather than buying more assets was the sense that they were running out of bonds to buy. This, I would suggest, is still perhaps the critical chart as we uh, look, forward to, uh, look forward to next week. There is a strong sense that the uh, central banks are out of ammunition and that negative rates wouldn't hurt. That will, as the G20 meeting in Shanghai approaches, I suspect put a lot more onus, if this sell-off carries on, will put a lot more onus on elected politicians to do something about it.